I've had many shoots, but poor no hair and makeup is by far the best. So you're kind of devastated when it's gonna be messed up soon. My name's Contessa Doll. I'm a professional dominatrix. I'm currently single, but hoping to get divorced soon. And I'm pansexual. 20 years in the industry, I started out um, stripping. I came from a modelling background, and I have to say, fashion modelling killed my self-esteem. It killed who I was as a person. It killed my identity. They wanted me to be androgynous. I didn't want to be that. I wanted to be sexy. I wanted to be a girl. I liked girly things. I was told I was too fat, too short. And then suddenly, when I went to the adult industry and did waitressing at Joanna's back in the day, suddenly, I'm getting compliments. And I read men's magazines instead of fashion magazines. And that made me feel good about myself as a person and my body. And once I could save up to buy boobs, there was no looking back. Like, I hate the fashion industry. I love the adult industry. I've finally been doing like the full service part like two years. And that's also the time I started doing porn was like when I left my now ex. So i um, in a different state, put the phone on hands free and called up mum and dad and told them that um, I was doing porn and there was a long pause. And then dad said, did you really need the money that much? You should have come to us. And I said, it's not about the money. <laughs> and my mother said, no one wants to do stuff like that. Like who made you do it? I'm like, me, I wanted to do it. And yeah, then dad said, you mean anyone can see these videos? Uh, yeah, as my nephew found out the hard way. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at yeah. that. Sorry, Tristan. <laughs> Sex on camera is not real sex, it's fake, and I'm gonna tell you a few secrets of the porn industry. It's all acting. You're having sex for the camera, you're not having sex for yourself. You would love to have sex for yourself. It takes a whole day to shoot. Once you get into the hair and makeup, and the hair and makeup, I tell you, is fantastic. I've had many shoots, but porno hair and makeup is by far the best. So you're kind of devastated when it's going to be messed up soon. The first time I did a facial, just begging them if we could not do it because I really like the hair and makeup and I wanted to go out afterwards. <laughs> no, no, that got messed up. <laughs> and uh, then first you get into the positions. Of, um, they do the photo shoot first of the positions of what you're going to do when you're filming. Then you start having sex and then like, before you can even enjoy it. It's cut, fix the bed, change positions, fix her hair, and uh, the cum scenes. One cum scene is real, the rest are fake. Yeah, just, just a matter of angles, so the camera can see everything, and sideways. Who gives a blowjob sideways, come on? It's so the camera can see, and the poor cameraman has to get in that angle. The fake jizz, you can put it anywhere on me. You can buy it online or you can make your own. And I've used hair conditioner at one stage because the guy couldn't come. And men are comparing themselves to Mr. Porno Guy and all these come, and sorry, it's probably coconut hair conditioner. And the squirting scenes. Just douche water inside yourself and squirt it out. That's one thing I hate about porn. It's a movie. It's like Star Wars. Special effects. It's not the real deal. It's there to entertain. It's not there to teach. It's not an educational tool. It's a movie, especially those squirting scenes. And if you can squirt for real, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have relationships with this kind of work because I want to give 100%. And it's just a personal choice. It's got nothing to do with jealousy. I can date, I have dated people that have been in the adult industry. I don't have any jealousy. I know what's real, I know what's fake. But personally, if I was in love with someone, I could not give the same 100% service when I'm thinking about just wanting to be with my partner. And that goes for any job that I do. Yeah, with mental health, um, I'd have to say everything that has to do with my mental health that has come from pr my past, has come from outside of work. With stripping and that, yeah, of course, like that did my head in, that made me hate men. It was BDSM that brought me back down to really liking men again. And um, whenever I need downtime is because I'm exhausted, because BDSM takes a lot out of you. It's not like just, yeah, hit it and quit it. It's like a lot of prep and then talking to the guys, getting inside their heads. You're giving a lot of yourself and then the aftercare and all that and then cleaning up the equipment after. That's what more exhausts me than 
anything else. And I always tell people, if you're torturing yourself to do this job, don't do it. I believe the Sydney sex industry does have a lot of support for sex workers, not for the rest of the world, which is really, really sad. That's where I say it should be legalised. World's oldest industry, we've been here the longest, we should be legalised. Oh, the most memorable one happened last year. This 80-year-old sweet grandpa came in. He wanted a Tabasco sauce enema, which is an enema, if you know what that is. It is liquid put inside the anus. He wanted Tabasco sauce, so I just diluted it with water just to yeah, save time. As soon as it was in there, I put the butt plug in. He writhed around in pain for a while, and then it was over, he went home, limping, but happy. The whole time I kept thinking, is this my future? Because I'm a bit of a pain slut. Is this what I'm gonna be at the age of 80? I just thought to myself, okay, maybe I should slow down with a few stuff that I'm doing. It's kind of like any drug, any high. Take it in moderation or you soon will be putting Tabasco sauce in your ass.